Tom here from Warren Systems, and I recently talked about Synology expanding their hard drive lock-in to include their smaller NAS systems. And like many of you, I was hoping it was just a bad idea they'd quietly back away from. Unfortunately, it looks like that's not happening. Even under smaller, more affordable NAS units, Synology is moving forward with their tighter restrictions, forcing users to buy their branded hard drives. So the big question is, is it time to move on Synology? Should you be looking for alternatives? Let's break that down and get started. Are you an individual or forward-thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structure cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that'll get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Now I'm going to start with why you may not want to leave Synology. And by the way, this is in no way of defense to their move here. I'm still completely against people who try to just make things proprietary and locked in. But there's no denying that the Synology ecosystem and the interface is what attracts a lot of people to it. It's easy to use. It's easy to set up. You don't have to spend too much time thinking about it. You can buy it. And prior to their changes they're going to make, you can buy whatever hard drives you want, but they do have a reasonable list of drives that aren't marked up too much at this time on the Synology devices. And that comes back to the ecosystem that they have here, which makes Synology so attractive. So there's a lot of packages they have here, but I don't focus on ones that I've talked about, like active backup for business for your Google Workspace or Office 365. For a lot of small businesses, there's a lot of license fees that get attached to this if you want to have a backup of all of your cloud data. And Synology, by not having all these extra licenses attached to it and offering this means it's pretty affordable. And if you started adding up what those licenses cost, not to mention you still have to store it somewhere or you can buy some cloud service to back up your cloud service, the cost can add up quite a bit, especially if you have a lot of data. Those recurring fees are eliminated with Synology, so that's a reason some people may want to keep it. And many of you, especially when you get back to the home lab environment, are going, what's a good replacement for active backup? While there are commercial tools out there that are great for backing up Windows, the fact is they all have license fees attached. I'm just not aware of any of them that are as smooth and polished as what Synology has to offer with active backup. That is going to be one of the challenges of just simply throwing out or not going with Synology in the future. And it comes back to that cost calculation of how much more are those drives from Synology? Would it still be a good value compared to, let's say, a five-year life cycle of the NAS and what you have to pay for it versus buying the licenses for software where you still have to land that data somewhere because if you buy a license for the backup, where are you going to back it up to? Well, you still need an ass. And before we get to the alternatives, you still have that storage cost that is kind of a fixed fee that you can look at over a five-year time, and it may be less money. As I said, not a defense of their system, but it's something to take into consideration before we can simply say, I want the perfect NAS and I wish they didn't doing this. And that's why I'm bringing this up. Just to put a little more thought process into the whether or not it's really time to abandon Synology, because there's always this small piece of me that's an optimist that hopes Synology will change your mind on this. But so far, since I've done that video, they're still pushing forward on the lock-in. Other features that's worth noting in here, and I'm not a big user of like the Synology Office, but I've certainly been testing it. And it's worked quite well. I know people that like it and they have so many other things like Synology Photos, which I've been using for a long time. A lot of these other features, and not to even mention Surveillance Station, which doesn't have license fees that are recurring, but at least has one-time license fees. I've talked about that extensively. These are all great reasons still to kind of stick with the Synology. And in the enterprise space, I get it, especially when companies are going, well, this is a part of our ecosystem that we have. So I don't think it's completely dead in the water, but I know once it comes down to the home lab people, this is something you're going to think a lot closer about, even though they have all these nice ease of use here, uh, locking me into which hard drives means in the future, if those drives aren't available, I guess I just got to buy another Synology that supports whatever newer drives. That whole lock-in thing, of course, is why we're all here. So let's dive in a little bit further to alternatives. 
Now, the first one I want to start with, of course, is TrueNAS because it's one of my favorite NAS tools. It's open source. It's been around for a very long time as well, but it definitely has a steep learning curve. And I do have a video directly comparing it to Synology. And I have this link you'll find in the description below. Now, besides all the little nuance features and differences, I'll give you the too long didn't watch. It does have a lot of challenges. For example, setting permissions. I've got a dedicated video to it because it is one of the first challenges you may run into is it's a little bit different when you set them up. The app ecosystem, on the other hand, has become bigger in many ways in Synology. Now, it doesn't have a direct replacement, and it's one of the things I highlight in this particular video for things such as active backup or the active backup for business to back things up that are in the cloud, but it does have a lot of the apps, especially in the home user market that you may be looking for. And of course, as a media server, it is absolutely solid. There's plenty of tools and more than one available for just doing media serving between Plex, Jellyfin, MB. Those are all available, so you have a lot lot of choices. And the fact that it's built on Docker means it expands if you want to get a little bit more advanced into, well, a much bigger ecosystem of being able to set up custom applications on there. And there's a lot of active development and of course, some pain from some of those changes. I'll fully admit the TrueNAS, because they were on Kubernetes, moved to Docker and then moved some of the underlying virtualization has caused a little bit of grief with people, but it is in the efforts to bring it to a broader audience with a bigger ecosystem. So some pain well, came from some of those changes, I'll fully admit. The other challenge, of course, is with TrueNAS, you're building it yourself versus turnkey. For some people, that's a absolutely exciting thing to build your own NAS, and those people never even have looked at Synology. For others, they're looking for a very turnkey solution. There's limited options that are just plug it in turnkey. There are some devices sold from TrueNAS and IX Systems, the company behind TrueNAS. There are some of the 45 drives devices. There's a lot of other NASes. Now, I'll also mention there are many of these other NAS devices out there that are basically x86 based and therefore can be reloaded with other software such as TrueNAS. So it's not that you have to completely DIY the solution or that you are locked into any particular hardware. As a matter of fact, it's the so the opposite that the large amount of choices you have sometimes are what causes the challenge of how do I get started with TrueNAS? And I know that's a challenge, but I don't think it's a terrible one myself, but I do think this is a good solid alternative to Synology minus those couple things that are missing around active backup and of course surveillance station. Now let's talk about Unraid. Well, this is an interesting option and it's not open source. I want to have that very clear. It does have a license fee attached to it, which caused some controversy as I know they had some license changes recently. That being said, I don't see any reason not to use Unraid if it fits the use case that you are looking for. It has a large app ecosystem. It's relatively easy to use. They've done a lot over the years to build out their UI for ease of use and easy to deploy applications, set up shares, and it's a very popular tool in the media server ecosystem as well. So if you want to build out your storage and all your applications on here at the same time, it is a well-rounded system for that with a lot of ease of use. My main reason for not using it until more recently, they didn't have ZFS, which is what TrueNAS uses the underlying file system. And it didn't have, and I still believe, unless I'm wrong, doesn't have the ability to scale and performance like TrueNAS. This is one of the reasons I chose not to use Unraid. But for those of you that go, it fits my use case, or I would like to give it a free trial, click the button at the top, not sponsored or affiliated with them. And no, I don't plan on making a bunch of videos. There are a lot of tutorials you can find both written and of course through YouTube where people have done a lot of how to set up Unraid type of tutorials. So I think it's a valid option for those of you that want to use it and uh, not a bad choice. Now coming back to turnkey solutions and I thought this was a really good write-up by my friends over at NAS Compares. And I've never done anything with Ugreen. They've never sent me anything. They've emailed me a few times. I just never replied to them. And I've not really dug deep into their particular devices. But the Ugreen offering a solution that physically looks a little bit like a Synology and their nice desktop raid boxes, and they seem to be becoming very popular. Uh, he did a really nice breakdown and comparison here. And it's very detailed on what does or does not work. And some of the nuances, once again, that come from those detailed breakdowns of is it just an drop in solution and well the too long didn't read all this or watch any of his videos is no it's not for example iSCSI support not supported so he's got a whole series of 
things that are supported in Synology that just aren't there yet in the Ugreen software. Now, the Ugreen software does have that more Synology interface look. And I love when he's doing these comparisons because you're like, yeah, they really copied a lot of Synology on here. And I think that's great. But they haven't been doing it as long and they just don't have the full ecosystem set up. They just don't have all the features there. So you're not going to get the same Synology experience. You're getting a lesser experience. Now, the cool thing is that Ugreen does support, I believe he said on some of the models, you can reload it with other operating systems. So it gives you the turnkey option if you're looking to use it for something else that's x86 based, such as TrueNAS and maybe even on RAID could be loaded on here as well. But I thought this was a really nice write-up. I'll leave this link down below. And yeah, this is a decent alternative if you just need the storage or back to, I keep mentioning media servers because it's a popular use case for these and it does have that functionality. It's lacking some of the other features such as deduplication, but they do have quite a bit of ever growing hardware choices and no drive lock-in, which is making people go, well, this is you know, pretty interesting. And uh, price-wise, you're talking about something that's competitively priced at what appears to be a little bit less than Synology for a similar system. So they're not dramatically different in hardware. Uh, maybe the Synology might be feeling a little bit more dated, but the really tight way that Synology integrates their apps. I know people will look at the hardware specs and say Synology slow, but those apps make a big difference. And that's what I'm bringing up since the beginning. The applications is really what drives more of the purchase of Synology, much more so than the hardware itself. And I do like this little summary right at the end here that as I sit here, better software in almost every respect, but better hardware for the price if you're looking at the hardware. Flexibility, you install third-party OSs versus the much bigger global support. You get the idea. It's not a drop-in replacement, but there's some reasons to take a look at Ugreen. Now, while I'm here, I'll also mention he has a video comparing Synology and QNAP. I am not a QNAP fan because of their long, bad history of security. I've done videos talking about the problems of QNAP and their security. That's only, of course, applies if you run the QNAP software. Some QNAP models can be reloaded with alternative software. So uh, feel free to make your own decisions at it. But my opinion is avoid QNAP because they're a security nightmare. Now, one more alternative that comes up from time to time is Open Media Vault. From an x86 standpoint, when running it on standard hardware, it doesn't really compare to TrueNAS or even Unraid in terms of the overall features. But there is an exception to that. It runs on ARM, and that's why Jeff Geerling has chosen this as his Raspberry Pi NAS software, and he's done videos on it. it it really is interesting that you can expand these to work as well as they can. And building a NAS out of Raspberry Pi is certainly an interesting experiment. Jeff has documented the journey and plenty of tutorials, and this is his write-up on it. Easy enough to find if you look up Raspberry Pi NAS and all the videos and work Jeff's put into that. So I think it's a cool use case for building some of these ARM-based NAS is Open Media Vault, but from a use case of an x86 system, I don't really find it to be a really compelling option. Uh, feel free to form your own opinions. It is free and open source. You can try it for yourself. So here's the thing. Synology still makes a solid NAS with great software, but locking users into only using their drives that Synology deems worthy instead of just offering a little checkbox, we can make that choice ourselves feels condescending and just anti-consumer. While the alternatives come with some trade-offs, they also come with something that Synology is starting to chip away at, and that's control. So what NAS will you be using in the future? Drop your thoughts and comments down below, or to have a more in-depth discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com on this or other topics. Like and subscribe, and of course, you can connect with me on whatever socials you'll find me on at lawrencesystems.com. Thanks.